Mr. Quick Spot. Oh, yeah. All right. I tell you what, the er a person who believes that this wasn't set up by our own government is an idiot. Okay, can I get you to turn around and face the, the table? Uh, I need for everybody to remove bags from the table. The only thing that should be on the table is the notebook. And uh, as I walk around, I need to make sure that you are utilizing your device for the purpose of following along in the reading. If you're not, you need to put your device up. If I see you doing anything else with your device, I, I, I am... It's like my responsibility to take it and give it to the principal. I don't have a choice in the matter. I hate to have to do that. What? What? Oh, the beginning of chapter 7. I mean, I know we kind of like started chapter 7, but we didn't officially start it. Okay, all right, so here we go. Listen carefully here. Let's go over this. Let's read, let's follow along, and if we can't really read, we can take notes with our notebooks and a pen. Well, that's okay. We got to start somewhere, that's for sure. Take, doing something. You got to start at some, point. at some point in life, we have to start. Okay. All right, so here we are. The title of the chapter. Now, I know you're probably thinking that, hey, as he went to title each chapter, each chapter, he said, uh, uh, okay, I'm going to call it this. But actually, no. There's a reason for each title. And we have pretty much proven that with chapter 5 and 6, that there is a reading, a reading, and that chapter 2. That there's a reason each chapter has a name. So let's try to understand this chapter and why it is named the Bean Field. Although, although you can't be seen, you're closer to that microphone than I am. So you definitely can be heard, actually better than me. Yeah, I know. So why are you talking and I'm trying to do this? You don't care, Mr. Yusuf. Mr. Yusuf, you should care. Yeah, but there are, believe it or not, there are other people who like watching my videos so they can get something. And they may be in the process of reading Walden, and they may be interested in what I'm about to say and do. So at least consider them. If you're not going to consider your amazing classmates. And I didn't mean amazing as in you're not amazing as in condescending. Really amazing, as in amazing. You didn't get that anyway. Okay. Here we go. Forget about it. I was going to say forget about it. Meanwhile. 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 Why did he start like that? I mean, because he's been talking about a quite a solitude and joining visitors. But, okay, that's not all he did. And that's the point I was making at the beginning. All right? That's not all he did. So meanwhile, my beings. And if you're a vegetarian, I'm a vegetarian, beings are very important in your diet. So beings are really important here. Meanwhile, I wish I, I, wish I knew how to grow beans. That would be even better. <laughs> meanwhile, where I would grow them, I don't know. But at any rate, <laughs> throw some dirt in my living room. <laughs> okay, all right. Meanwhile, my beings. The length of whose rows added together was seven miles. That's like 14, 15, 16, I don't know, uh, kilometers. This is a long, long stretch. Already planted were more important to be, uh, uh, I'm sorry, already uh, planted were impatient to be hoed. For the earliest had grown considerably before the latest and were to be 
I mean, were in the ground. So in other words, he was, <laughs> he was experiencing some super plants and some super slow plants. So he was, and you can imagine how much work that is, you know what I mean? It's not like you can just chill a day and say, okay, I did that. There's stuff happening constantly. You in there tending them. If you ever had a garden at least, then you know what that means. You have to watch over it like a hawk from all the, you know, animals and weeds and insects and you constantly going and checking and all of that stuff. You, you know what kind of work that is. Imagine that garden being a whole lot bigger. Yes? Okay. And uh, 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 I'm assuming because Henry David Thoreau is a bit of a naturalist, uh, I'm assuming that he didn't throw a bunch of pesticides on his, on his uh, crop. I'm pretty sure he had to be out there all the time. Yes, watching it. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> had grown considerably before the latest were in the ground. Indeed, they were not easily be, to be put off. Uh, that's the point I just made. What was the meaning of this so steady and self-respecting, this small, herculean labor? Remember the question I asked you at the very beginning. Did he just go into the woods and do this experiment? You know, just to be there to relax and talk to his friends. Or was he really trying to live the life? You get it? Live the life? You know? Was he just like, you know, one of those uh, gangster rapper guys who really, you know, grew up in the suburbs in a rich family and now all of a sudden he's like gangster now? He's a killer now, right? <laughs> or was he one who really lived the life? That's, I'm trying to put it in a way you can. Okay, so he, he's really trying to live the life, and, and, and this is surprising him because, of course, those who actually live in this area, this ain't like an experiment for them. This is what they do every day. They're fighting with their crops, and they you know, putting in some serious labor, and he's like, he calls it Herculean labor. You know who Hercules is? No, not the rock. <laughs> Let's continue. Why are y'all so slow? Uh, I know. I knew not. I came to love my roles, my beings, though so many more than I wanted. I didn't mean to really plant that many. But I did anyway. They attached me to the earth. And so I got strength like Antidius. I don't know who that is. Some mythological stuff. But why should I raise them? What's the purpose? I mean, you know, why should I raise them? Only heaven knows why he decided to. It, in other words, what he's saying, what he's saying, why did I even bother myself with this? He didn't, I didn't have to. I could just bought the beans. But I didn't. Hmm. This was my curious labor all summer, to make this portion of the earth's surface, which had yielded only uh, cinnafoil or blackberries, downwards. These are natural things that grow in the woods anyway. And the like, before sweet wild fruits and pleasant flowers produced, instead this pulse. What shall I learn? Here we go. What shall I learn of beings or beings of me? I cherish them, I hold them early and late. I have an eye on them, and this is my day's work. It is a fine, broad leaf to look on. My auxiliaries are the dews and rains which water this day dry soil, and what fertility is in the, fo in the soil itself, which for the most part is lean and effort. My enemies, uh oh, my enemies, he's going to battle. Hercules, battle. My enemies are worms, cold days, and most of all, woodchucks. <laughs> he's going to learn that he hates woodchucks. <laughs> the last 
have nibbled for me a quarter and of an acre clean. That's a whole lot of beans. But what right had I to oust John Worth and the rest and break up their ancient herb garden? In other words, hey, I mean, can I really be upset with the woodchuck? I mean, I also went in and like destroyed the, the nature too. So, I mean, I can't really be angry with that. Soon, however, the remaining beings will be too tough for them. Meaning the woodchuck, he ain't going to be able to, you know, when they get full grown, he's not going to be able to get into them. And go forward to meet new foes. And I guess the new foes, I'm just going to assume it's probably going to be him. <laughs> or somebody stealing them, which is also a problem. But who doesn't mention that? Okay. I need to know something. What is he learning and how does it relate to the other people, the normal inhabitants of Walden Pond? Is he getting to understand their daily lives, the struggles that they have every day? Go ahead, go ahead. He's learning how they live and like, instead of just, you know, he could, he could stay there and do nothing and just, since he had, he's a scholar, so he can just like work any like easy job, but he's mm -hmm. going there and like working hard to like, see what they have to go through every day mm -hmm. while well, he's just doing it like as, a, as an experiment. And he's just, they live it since they were born until the day they'll die. Okay, anything else that we get from these uh, lines that indicate what kind of experience he's experiencing that comes close to what the normal inhabitants experience? I'm looking at the, 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 the red table over here. Anything, anything else? that he indicated here, that, that may help us understand how he's getting a real experience. He's living the life. He's getting street cred. <laughs> I know about that. <laughs> he's gaining uh, credibility on the streets of uh, Concord by his, uh, his uh, actions and what actions do you think in these lines probably would gain him the most Credibility. I'm asking him. Yes. Uh, purple group. How is he earning his street credibility here? Or we can call it road credibility because I'm pretty sure it's a dirt road. His dirt road credibility. Dirt road cred. I guess that don't sound as good as street cred. Hmm? How is he proving that he's living the life? Okay, do the beans. Give me some specifics about doing the beans, though. I mean, he goes into detail. Yes. No, I'm saying I'm going to let him finish. Go ahead. Every day you see them. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay. So he's, he's in there. He's in those rows. He's analyzing them. Obviously, if he, his enemy is worms, then he has to be like on his ground, like looking at the worms and then looking, analyzing. He's chasing the woodchucks away as much as possible. I mean, he's all day long fighting the battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Of course, they just going to come back. But uh, that's why uh, acre, that acre is a pretty big plot of land. That's like, <laughs> that's like a lot to be destroyed after your hard labor. But that's the whole point. He's experiencing what kind of labor on a daily basis the normal inhabitants experience. You know? But here's something else that I don't think you considered you need to get down in your notebooks. And I want you to write this idiom down. This is an idiom. <laughs> labor of love. A labor of love. Labor of love. What does that mean? That means that however hard the work is, when you love what you're doing, it's not work at all. It's called labor of love. He's also proved that this herculean work, this hard work, constant, you know, struggle, 
is actually very enjoyable. And he enjoyed it tremendously. He found a happiness in this work that he didn't know before because he didn't do this work before. So those who would assume that the person in the field who tealing night, day to night, every day is unhappy, that may be a misconception because he's not unhappy with his beans. He loves his beans. He, have, he has become, you know, attached to them. Are they attached to him? Both. So we know this is a labor of love. Okay, so let me finish, though. Let me finish. Let me finish. When I was. Oh, okay, so here's the paragraph that we talked about last lesson showing us why he's environmentalist, why he loves nature, why he's even in Concord. It also answers other questions, and he kind of skips over it because it also answers why so many real visitors came to see him. Could be old friends, people who he knew back in the day, you know, so he really enjoyed this day. Yeah. Ah, when I was four years old, as I well remember, I was brought from Boston to this, my native town. Though these very woods and this field to the pond, it is one of the oldest scenes stamped on my memory. He never forgot this place. He never forgot this place. And now tonight my flute was wake the echoes over that very water. A literal flute. He plays the flute. The pines still stand here older than I. So the woods he's walking around in, you know, was there even when he was a child. Or if some have fallen, I have cooked my supper with their stumps. And a new growth is rising all around. Preparing another aspect for new infants' eyes, new generations to come. Almost the same John Worth springs from the same perennial root in this pasture. And even I have at length helped to clothe that Fabulous landscape of my infant dreams, my childhood memories, and one of the results of my present uh, presence and influence, real important line, is seen in these bean leaves, corn blades, and potato vines. He's reliving his childhood here. He's reliving his child. In these two years, this is, has become at a very, very sentimental, wonderful experience for him because he's literally reliving his childhood. Going back to the basics, back to what he loves. He's making another point here. Hmm. That if we think back to a simpler time, we can always find those simple things that used to make us happy. Yes, times when we didn't have devices like this. No Xbox. No internet. No computer. Were you unhappy then? <laughs> no, you weren't unhappy then. But you found simpler things. Some crayons in an empty sheet of paper. That's all life needed at the time. And you could spend hours lost in your happiness. This is what he's talking about. So he has went back to the crayons and the empty paper, and he is now reliving that happiness he forgot about. The point he's trying to make is that now that we think we need all of this stuff, all of these things, do all of this work, all of these places in order to be happy, he said no. If you simply just go back into your memory, you would discover a time when you needed nothing, literally, to be happy. The point he's trying to make. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to believe, but yes. 
Okay, uh, yeah, Microsoft Paint. Okay, I had crayons. <laughs> you had Microsoft Paint, okay? Same thing. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, <clears throat> listen carefully, please. I planted about two acres and a half of upland. Woo. Wow, that's hardcore. And as I was only about 15 years since the land was cleared, I myself got out two or three cords of stumps. So this wasn't like completely flat land. He had to actually do some work before he even planted the beans. This is the point he's trying to make. I did not give in any, I did not give it any manure. <laughs> uh, you know what? This what you're doing is manure, okay? <laughs> I can use that word. That's a proper word. You know what manure is, right? For those who know what manure is, then you understand what I'm saying. Uh, you, these two tables, you are really involved in some manure right now. I would like for you to clean it up. Okay, and stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you don't know what manure is, then why didn't you write it down and look it up? That's the question. <laughs> but in the course of the summer, it appeared behind the arrowheads, which I turned up in hoeing. Arrowheads? What's that? Huh? Arrowhead. Arrowhead? Arrow, what's that? No, no problem. All right, all right, uh, here it is. A turn up in hoeing. That an extinct nation had anciently dwelt here and planted corn and beans ere white men came to clear the land. He's making a point here without making a point. It's called illusion. He's alluding to something. <sighs> He doesn't want to offend any of the readers because they, this is a topic, a subject that many people reading the book at this time felt very strongly about. I want to know what he's alluding to. Illusion. It's an SAT literary device that you will see at some point when you're doing that test. It's called illusion with an A, not illusion with an I. It's illusion. He is alluding to something. Allusion is mentioning something without actually saying its name. Mentioning something without actually saying its name. What is he alluding to? Like your parents would come, open the door of your room and say, Whoa, was there a tornado in the air or what? <laughs> I, they didn't say specifically that your room is just dirty. They say, was there a tornado in here? <laughs> okay, one second. Okay, so my question is, what is he alluding to here? I want you to listen again as I read it. Read it with me. Here we go. I did not give it any manure. But in the course of the summer, it appeared by the arrowheads, by the arrowheads, which I turned up in hoeing, that an extinct nation had anciently dwelt here and planted corn and beans, ere white men came to clear the land. What is he talking about here? Now, I know you all went to Google Earth. You typed in Walden Pond. You zoomed out, and you saw where in the United States this area is. What is he alluding to? Go ahead. He's alluding to the invasion of, from Britain, mm -hmm. like from Britain to, like, to the Americas, how they killed all the Americans, which are the Indians. Okay, Na the Native Americans, which still exist in America, which is half of my bloodline, Native Americans who actually existed in the Americas before it was called the Americas for 5,000 years before the first European even knew that the Americans were there. It's, it's a very sensitive, sensitive topic in this part of the country because they had just recently eradicated entire races of Native Americans completely. Tribes like the Mohican and other tribes like this that don't even exist today because they killed every last one. In this area, they couldn't make, they didn't want to make deals. 
They exterminated complete races of people. And the only thing you can find of them now is what he was digging up as he was, oh, you know, artifacts, some arrowheads. But not ancient, though. He's actually being sarcastic. This is 18, 100 years prior to this, not thousands of years. They had just eradicated that area of all humans that were there and moved in. So he's mentioning this, and he's going to talk about, he's going to make allusions to this again, because he does not, he did not agree with that. He did not agree with the agreements they made with the Native Americans, turning against them, war, going to war with them, eradicating them. They would go into a village and kill everybody, everybody, eradicate them, and now you don't even know they exist. There's actually a book called Last of the Mohicans, a movie called Last of the Mohicans, and, uh, yeah. and this, is, this is kind of the area where they're in. The, the, the Native American tribes that existed in now what is known as Manhattan, these places, these tribes, people were completely eradicated from the earth, never to be seen again. So this is the illusion he's making here. So that, that lets him know, I, I, he knew it before, but that also reminds him, and he's reminding the reader, that although I'm in a place and I'm inhabiting this place, and people inhabited this place before me, but those people, they really didn't even own this area. There were people before us. This was a, this was a hot topic then because at this time, the people who were being called Americans then, they wanted the history to be without the history of the people who were there before They didn't want anybody to know that they went in and exterminated people and then they moved in. They want you to think that, you know, this is how it's always been. But no, that's not how it's always been. There, were a lot of, there was a lot of bloodshed, hard, ache, sadness that came along with the, coming up with this country called America. Uh, some really disgusting stuff. They couldn't even put in Hollywood movies, I don't think, because that would be like, ugh. Yep. Okay, all right, so let us continue here. Uh, uh, okay, all right. To some extent had exhausted, uh, exhausted the soil for this very crop. Before yet another wood, chuck, or squirrel had run across the road, or the sun had got above the shrub oaks while the dew was on, though the farmers warned me against it, I would advise you to do all your work, if possible, while the dew is on. I begin to level the ranks of the haughty weeds and blah, 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 to the end of that paragraph. Now he goes into great detail the kind of labor that he did, the kind of work that he did. The kind of work that he did. Uh, he's, also, he's also mentioning how he, you know, his individualism, which although he was told by the people who do this kind of work all the time, hey, you should do it at this time and you should do it in this way, but he didn't take their advice. He did it the way he wanted to do it. But, you know, that's, that's him. That's Henry David Thoreau. To the end of the chapter. <laughs> Last paragraph of the chapter. I'm sorry, the day. I felt proud to know the liberties of Massachusetts and our four fatherland were in such safekeeping. As I turned to my hoeing again, I was filled with an inexpressible confidence and pursued my labor cheerfully with a calm trust in the future. What is he talking about? What, what, what did he find out that all of a sudden made him feel like extra good? But I, yeah, yeah, but I want to know what. I need some details. I know I skipped some stuff. But you didn't skip it. You read it, so I want to know, what is he talking about? What all of a sudden made him feel good? I mean, he was already feeling good, now he's feeling real good. Hey. All in. This is an Islamic school. How'd you know? I'm talking about tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's rolling the hard way. We don't want to roll quite that hard. We want to get one of them little minibuses.
president who believes that this wasn't set up by our own government is an idiot. Everybody's gone out of their mind. Quick start. Oh, yeah. All right. All right.